Hello, stupid. I'm great. How are you? I am good. A little lazy, a little jet lagged, but doing yeah, good. Yeah, just came back from vacation. I did, and I'm a little offended you haven't said anything about my tan yet. Oh, your tan is gorgeous. It's beautiful. You know what? It's because I've reduced the camera to like a tiny little screen, so oh. I can't fully appreciate your tan on okay. my computer view right now. But you look gorgeous. Uh, it also you. looked at first when you first came on screen. I thought you were wearing like um, a suit jacket, but it's just your shirt. <laughs> Imagine, I'm just a super professional today. I feel like um, you could rock some shoulder pads. Oh, I would love that. Um, for my like civil ceremony, I wore like a little shoulder pad blazer dress. Oh yeah. I think that it's in too right now. Yeah. Did you have pictures one. from the civil ceremony? Yeah, it's just like us in our place. We did it in our house. Oh, okay. The guy came in. Yeah, it's nothing special. I don't feel like I saw this. I want to see that uh, shoulder pad dress later. Okay, I'll send that to you. <laughs> um, I just got back from Hawaii. So I'm like, it's so funny. It wasn't like hot, hot there. It was 23, yeah. but like beautiful. I think it was like the most perfect weather you can ask for. Mm. Um, one day, I sat on the beach for two days. We went there for six days. We were like exploring and stuff like that. Yeah. Um. That one day I sat on the beach for about four or five hours, I burnt. My nose is burnt. Oh, which is like and a new experience for you? I have burnt before, um, but just like my body. Mm. But like my nose, I'm like, I'm Indian. This shouldn't happen to me. <laughs> you were like offended. Yeah. That's... Do you burn easily? Oh, yeah. Well, mm, actually, it depends. I tan very fast. So once I got a good tan on, I won't burn as much. But um, the top of my head, like obviously, like because I, I'm bald, it's very sensitive still to the sun. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but otherwise, like not too bad. Like I've never had very, very dramatic sunburn. Yeah, and like I hate sunscreen. I don't wear it as much as I should. So yeah, same. I I think the last time I like burnt it was in Mexico. Mm. Um, probably five, six years ago. And that's when I'm like, oh, I should take sunscreen a bit more seriously, mm. which I do now. But like my nose and it wasn't even like that much of sun, you know, like it was okay. No, it was sunny. It was beautiful. And I tan really easily. But then my just nose was red for the past couple of days. Yesterday, like you could t uh, it started peeling a little bit. Mm. And then today, too, I guess like I don't even look that tan anymore now that I'm looking at myself. <laughs> <laughs> she looked great. You know what it is? It's that that lower temperature that's that makes you feel like the sun is not as strong, but it doesn't, mm -hmm. it doesn't correlate necessarily. Mm -hmm. But yeah, twenty three is like ideal temperature for me. So beautiful, like mm -hmm. it was like when the sun is out, it's like hot, yeah. and when the sun's gone, it's like cool. It oh man, I I want to go back. But actually, you know what? The weather's been nice. I got here back to Vancouver yesterday. It was seven degrees. Oh yeah. Feels good. Sun was out. Oh, How nice. is it in Montreal? It's very sunny today, which feels good because it feels like it hasn't been sunny in a while. It's mm -hmm. like minus five to minus seven today, I think. Gross. So it's okay. It's not that bad. Yeah. Honestly, this winter has been very easy so far. So yeah, and... super mild all over the country, uh, yeah. all over the world. I think kind of concerning, but I mean, that's the if that's the flip flops. The... If that's the flip side of climate change, you know, so far I'm enjoying it. Well, then we're like, we're not going to have like a real summer and like, it's just sad yeah. to see. And also like devastation and um, wildfires. Yeah. And uh, what are they called? Catastrophes, natural catastrophes, um, yeah. refugees. So, you know, but so far I'm enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, on a higher note, yeah, <laughs> I have an icebreaker for you today. Woo! Since it's Thomas' episode, yeah. Um. All right. What's a movie that you've watched over and over again? Oh my god, that's a good question. 
There is many because I like to rewatch movies. Okay. Um, recently, I've just rewatched the whole Lord of the Ring saga. So the three Lord of the Ring movies and the three Hobbit movies. Okay. Wow. Yeah. But when I was younger, I would rewatch with my friend um, Nat um, Amélie Poulain, the fabulous destin d'Amélie Poulain, or I think in English it's just Amélie. It's like this okay. cute, like indie-ish French movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's cool. Maybe I'll watch it. I've been thinking about asking you about like a TV show or a movie in French that you would recommend to get my like French better. That would be a good one if you. It's also French from France, but not okay. in um, a, a too slangy way. I feel. Okay. So it might be easier to watch. Nice. Yeah, and it's a classic. You'll recognize the music from it, I'm sure, because the music is all is all uh, is everywhere from that movie. It's like that oh. little piano, like, I uh, no, I won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> abort, abort, abort. I can't do it. But uh, you'll recognize the music, I'm sure. Nice. I'm not a huge like like um, movie watcher over and over again. Like, if I like something. If I don't, like, understand the plot, I'll watch it again. But I'm mm. not, like, someone who watches something over and over again. Oh, yeah. No, I especially um, franchises, like, I'll miss the whole... Like, I love series more than movies, mm-hmm. I think. But when mm-hmm. a franchise will do, like, a bunch of movies, and I, I, I'm living for it. Like, uh, Marvels, for example. Like, I'll rewatch yeah. the whole Marvel saga every now and then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know what? You're right. Series I have rewatched, like in anticipation for the newest one. Mm. Or you do like marathons. Like I've done that Harry Potter marathon millions of times. Yeah. Um, a lot of horror movies, mm. but other movies. The only one that's coming to mind for me that I watched over and over again is The Proposal. Have you oh, seen it? I don't think I've uh, seen that. I believe it's Sandra Bullock and Brian Reynolds. Okay. I could be wrong. It's really funny. It's just like those funny rom-coms. I went to like the movies in like middle school with uh, my best friend. And I remember it's so funny because in the end, there's this scene that's hilarious. They do um, the song like to the window, to the wall, right. around a fire pit. And it's so funny. And we had to like, like we were in middle school and like we're drinking our pop and like we're almost finished our pop and we have to pee so bad. But we can't go because it's the funny part. So we're just like sitting there <laughs> laughing, holding in um, our pee. So it's a good one. Oh, nice. Okay. I'll have to watch yeah. that one. I think I've watched it. You know what I haven't watched either? And I'm like, I, I keep meaning to watch because I see like snippets here and there and it looks hilarious. Uh, Bridesmaid. Oh, that is another one I rewatch a lot. It's on the plane a lot. I love that one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, you love it. I know, Bridesmaids I'm sure so and Bride Bride Wars as well is a oh, really okay. good one. All these like rom coms are the yeah. best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fun. Okay. Well, you know what? It's so funny you say that because I've been wondering what to do for my birthday that's coming up. Um, because like I don't feel like having a party, but I also don't feel like doing nothing, whatnot. And I think we're going to do like a big movie night uh, with like just a few friends, like set up the living room with like pizza and candies and do a movie night. That would be so fun. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm actually excited. I wish I could come. I know. Well, you have your priorities. I'm not part of them. (laughs) Shut up. I tried, (laughs) but this is the hard part of being bi-coastal. Yeah. Bi-coastal. I love that term. Um, anyways, I have quite the episode for you today, and I think I'm going to take you by surprise also with this one. I, you haven't done a like surprise episode for in a while. No. And I've been going back and forth on what to do for this one for a while, but then I realized, uh, this episode is coming out on the 15th of February, which is the day after Valentine's day. Ooh. Yes. So we're going to be a little... Well, very on theme, actually. It's a little bit on the nose, but okay. um, I feel like it's going to be fun. So when I was looking for topical subjects, I just like type dating in YouTube and got overwhelming amount of research, of, of results, sorry. Um, mostly like vlogs and podcasts um, of dating advice. A lot, a lot of women telling women how to date 
and also a lot a lot of men telling women how to date oh god right um so i have a few of the <laughs> titles that stuck out to me seven great questions you should ask a man in the early stages of dating do this to get him hooked in the early stages of dating this is why so many women are single why oh. hot girls and rich men stay single Three feminine habits men find wildly attractive. Seven pieces of texting advice that leads to commitment for women. Stop being needy. <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> and then women's dating standards have ruined relationships. <laughs> oh my God. People are so harsh on women. People are so harsh on women. And like... People take dating very seriously, like mm -hmm. so, so seriously and so intense. It feels like people prepare for it, like job interviews. There's obviously a whole industry around dating. Mm -hmm. um, and I found that to be very troubling because mm -hmm. for me, like dating should be fun. You know, it should be chill. It should like it's you're meeting people. It shouldn't be that serious. Mm hmm. You know what I mean? I agree. And I also, but I like, agree, but I also think we're a little biased on this. Like for me, I agree, but it just I haven't dated much. Mm -hmm. um, I got into a relationship very early and very young. Yeah. But I also feel like it just like we just have those personalities where we're like we don't need no man, you know? Yeah. Well, that's a, that's why I was leading to also like I, I I I'm also someone who doesn't think there's anything wrong with being single. Mm -hmm. um and who who actually enjoyed being single for a very long time and and who really didn't feel that kind of pressure to like date for success mm -hmm. um i started dating very old in life in the sense that i had relationships before but there wasn't very that there wasn't much that dating aspect to it mm -hmm. um so i thought you know maybe it's time you and i add some stupid to the dating advice pool Oh my god. What do you think? Do you want to try to fix dating with me? Oh my god, I'm so scared, but let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> right. yes. Hopefully we don't ruin anyone's lives. Right. So this is me complaining about all the stupid dating advice uh, videos on, on YouTube, and then we're just going to add to it. <laughs> let's do it. So I have some stats on dating for you to start, okay? Um, these are very random. I tried to categorize them in a sense that's kind of fluid and makes sense, but more or less. Um, so let's just jump right into it. 88% of Americ Americans will marry for love, making this the most common motivations for a union. Uh, and a recent survey found that 61% of men and women desired to get married. That seemed high for me but then i guess not oh we were talking about that in your episode also marriage is kind of making a, a comeback right yeah it's right. returning people are wanting to get married more and more now i yeah. think covid yeah you have covid to thank for that one i think so too yeah 30 33 percent of marriages in the u.s ends in divorce and then in 2021, a study found that married couples who met online were six times more likely to end in divorce. Wow. I know. 12% um, online versus 2% through friends and family are more likely to, to end in divorce. Interesting. Right? One third of single people will use uh, dating, apps, uh, dating apps to find love. And 50% of the users, sorry, 57% of users report a overall positive, positive experience on the app. Wow, those stats are very low. I expected more. Right? It's very low. People don't have a good time on the dating apps. Mm -hmm. um, it's estimated that 45% of Americans will be single in 2024. That's kind of high too, I feel. 40%. Interesting. Yeah. The average length of courtship is two years. Also low, but that doesn't surprise me much because I feel like yeah. you do have to try a bunch of people sometimes to find the right person. I feel like that third year is the year where it's like make it or break it. Oh, I don't know why to me third year is like the hard year 
all relationships. Like I, the odd numbers, like third, five, seven. Mm. I don't know why that's, that's like, so really... funny because they say the same thing about quitting cigarettes, for example. Really? Yeah. That's so funny. Well, for me, like third year for sure, I feel like that's when you start becoming yourself in front of them a bit more. Yeah. Um, from what I've heard, a lot of people that I know that have been in relationships, that third year is where it's like you find out. Yeah. And to me, like when I hear someone's been together for three years, I'm like, okay, cool. Like, I feel like that's a good thing. The that's first two feeling. years, still like, I'm like, oh, I hope they make it. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then if like when I hear people get married before those three years, that's what I'm like. Oh my god, that's um, true. That's just my personal opinion. I don't know why. <laughs> I used to have something against uh, odd numbers. Uh, I mean, odd numbers are gross and horrible, and they yeah. are now my curse because I have every odd number episode. But I mean, there, <laughs> there's, I, I kind of get that. I kind of get that. I also like haven't been in in three year relationships much, so. Mm -hmm. here's hoping <laughs> i believe in you guys i think so we're fine too i'm i'm very happy with our relationship worry about that fifth year i'm kidding <laughs> yeah exactly uh let's see here on average of on average sorry people have sex around 104 times per year that's nothing it's like one day out of three Okay, no, 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 that's good, that's good. It's it's actually not bad at all, right? Yeah. And the average person will kiss 29 people in their lifetime. That's such a specific statistic. Is it? I, I feel like 29 people in a lifetime, like tongue kiss? It just says kiss. I don't know. Mm. I'm sure it's not okay, cheap. Okay, I'll take it. Yeah. Take it. <laughs> no, I'm thinking like a pack. Yeah. Versus I mean, think of, think of it this way. When you're entering a survey of how many people you kiss, it's one that's memorable enough to put on the survey. True. Right? You don't want to so be like three. It's more like they remember kissing on average 29 people in a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Okay, it makes sense. Right? I feel like 29 is a good number. Like 30 feels like someone put it on 30, you feel too much maybe. Yeah. <laughs> this is one I found very interesting. Okay. People are more concerned with emotional cheating than physical. And the top three reasons of what they classify as cheating is intentionally fantasizing about another person in a romantic way, flirting with another person, and still having a dating profile. Um, having sex with another person was the fourth reason. That's so funny, but I agree. I 100% agree. I knew you would. Yeah, you're very intense about these things a bit. I think emotional, um, emotionally cheating on someone is so much more messed up than physically cheating. Physically cheating is bad. I don't think like having a dating... Actually, no, having a dating uh, a profile is bad for me too. Oh, yeah. That, that's that's bad. Intentionally fantasizing about another person oh, in a romantic no. way. That's fine. Fantasize all you want. But it doesn't say in a sexual way. It says in a romantic way. So fantasizing about dating someone. But fantasizing is something you're just making up in your head. Thank you. Thank you. And I think we need to make more space for that, like normalize that. Like yeah. it's okay to daydream about stuff. It's okay to fantasize about stuff and yeah. still pursue something different. Yeah. Unless yeah. you're like fantasizing about them and pursuing them. Or mm. fantasizing about them and wanting those things to come true. All right. depends on your attention, right? Okay, this next one. 34% of men found that liking another person's photo on social media to be a form of cheating. Men say that. And then on average, women didn't really care about that. Oh, I'm very surprised by that statistic. I think it's more you see women say like, oh, I don't like it. He's liked. He likes, you know... Only fans, girls, all the time. But I feel like it's exactly because it's so much more common for men to go like women's picture mm -hmm. that it doesn't stand out as much as if uh, a girl go likes go like hot dude pictures. True, because there's naked women all over the internet. Right. Um. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I I see your point there. What about you? Is that like a red flag for you? Oh my god, no. No, right i don't but like me and justin really don't care about these stuff at all 
Um, and like, I think there's a lot of room in our relationship for emotional connections with other, like emo to a certain level. Like, I don't think we, neither of us would be okay with like starting dating other people and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But, but building meaningful connections with others, like, you know, for me, like friendship and love is all blurred into like, there's very, a lot of blurred lines there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I feel like we're almost on the poly spectrum in that sense. Yeah. For me, uh, like, I mean, um, I'll talk for myself. Like, I don't know if Justin would agree with all those statements sincerely, but yeah, but the results are uh, the same. We don't really care about those things. Yeah. For me, like it depends. And I think that it's like, it's um it's it's not like a black and white thing like if you're liking one girl's picture that you may know like from high school consistently then like and only like her butt pics then yeah maybe i won't like that mm. but like if you're liking naked girls i don't really care but then i don't really want to see you on instagram and your whole feed is just naked girls you know to yeah. me that's a little is that that's a little icky um, and it's like, okay, like if like I am, I'm a very flat girl and you only like girls with like double D's, then I'll be a little like, oh, okay. You know, I'll, I can't right. help but compare myself, but that's just right. for me. But what if instead of Instagram, it's his like Pornhub history? Does that bother you the same way? I think so. Like that's not something I look at. <laughs> No, I but that's like, thing. I, I think thing. that would be something I, think... I don't want to know. But then if I find <laughs> out and I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> it's only like stepmom porn. I think like what I'm going to like for me, it it's the same, it's the same category of like private garden that you don't need to know about these things so much. Mm -hmm. Um, but because social media is much more of a platform with interactions both way. I can see where it's like, well, are you waiting for them to reach out to you and to like your pictures back or something? Mm -hmm. Then I can see how that might be more difficult. But, you know, appreciated pictures of like naked people or half naked yeah. people is it's it's so much more complex than, oh, I'm liking this picture because I prefer her over the person I'm, I'm with. True. Yeah, exactly. It's not black and white. It's very different. And like, as I'm saying, like, I don't want to see his for you page, all naked girls, my for you page basically is because it's all like, I like, like a lot of fitness content, so yeah. like a lot of girls showing off their body. <laughs> There's a little double standards there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, exactly. It's like, if you're liking an influencer, then I don't care. But if you're liking someone, you know, and like, if it's at 2am, that's very different than as opposed to at like, yeah, noon, that's know? fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, this one is very interesting also because I found the number was high. 34% of Americans describe that their ideal relationships is something other than complete monogamy. How many percent? Sorry. 34. 34. Okay, I'm not surprised. No? It is no, becoming like... more and more po uh, popular, right? Exactly. I think it is. Um, but I think a lot of people are more like they... Their ideal relationship is that, like, they think it's more than monogamy because they're curious about it. Well, that's the thing. Ideal relationship and achievable goals are not necessarily the same thing, right? Exactly. That's very fair. Um, I have some very Canadian stats also. Marriage remains the predominantly type of, the predominant, sorry, type of union. In 2021, 77% of couples were married, with the remaining 23% being uh, living in common law. Canada has the highest amount of common law couples in the G7. Interesting. I thought so too, yeah. One in three adults in a relationship under 35 live separate from their partner. Which, wow. Yeah. But it doesn't specify the long, the, 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 long, the, the length of the relationship, right? So mm -hmm. it might be just that people take longer to move in together. Mm-hmm. And then here you go. 98.5% of couples in Canada are opposite gender, cisgender couple. So basically a man and a woman in a straight relationship is 95% of the couples in, in Canada. I'm very surprised by that stat. It seems low. And those are as of, as of 2021. 
So same gender cisgender couple are 1.1% of all couples. Wow, and, that feels like very low. Like, yeah. I feel like I know more couples than that. And like, if you look at all my couple friends, I have more friends that are uh, same gender couples than yeah. uh, opposite gender. To me too, wow. low. But I think, um, you know, I what think- What year is that from? 2021. Okay. Yeah. Uh, transgender and non-binary couple in which at least one person is transgender or non-binary represent about one in every 250 couples. So 0.4%. Okay. Which this I find is an important stat because it's such a low number and yet it occupies such a big presence in political concerns right now. Mm -hmm. And that's what people mean when they say it feels like a targeted, targeted attack. Mm -hmm. Because, listen, this is not relevant. Mm -hmm. It's not a, a number big enough for people to be like, they're grooming our children. Um, what are my child's going to think if they see this? Like, chances are your child won't see this exactly right so you know i thought that was an important number also yeah um also um on uh, the positive side for you the number of divorces has been on decline over the three decades despite the growing number of marriages so interesting yeah because it hasn't been three years since they did those stats i'm kidding <laughs> uh young married couples in particular are getting divorced significantly less I think, I think it's like just too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> no one can afford to live by themselves anymore. So it's like, might as well stick it through. That's very funny. Oh, well, here's the next slide. In 2021, one in seven Canadians live alone. The highest it's ever been on record. Wow. Yeah. That's and during then, COVID too. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And then the number of people aged 35 to 44, um, who live alone has doubled since uh, 1981. So 10% uh, of people now live alone between 35 and 44. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I thought that was an uh, interesting stats to, to start Those us off. Those are really interesting stats. It's I love census and stuff like that. You can pull out so much inf information from those. Yeah. You yeah. do have a lot of stats on your episodes, I've noticed. Uh, I love stats so much. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I, I have to say as much as like, I'm really enjoying living with Justin, living alone was like a, a very positive experience for me. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering like, like, cause I, I consider myself almost privileged to have had that opportunity. I think it's, it's a period where I had the most growth in my life. And I was wondering for, for someone like you who didn't live alone much at all in your life. Do you, do you think about that? Um, no, because ever, like Avril and I, like he's almost always been a shift worker oh. and it's like 12 hour shifts, like night shifts and stuff like that. And I feel like I am alone at home a lot, which okay. I love. So I feel like I haven't missed out on that experience. Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah. I can see that. You have it like best of both worlds. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, it took me like, everything just now enough to burst into song. Okay. Anyways. Um, <laughs> I, but like, I don't know if I would like, I think, I don't know if that's something I crave. Well, it's like, very fair. Yeah. That's very but, fair. Like, but Avril doesn't do night shifts. Like he has had some periods in his life and he's going back to that where he's doing a, you know, a, regular job like a nine to five eight hour shifts i will miss that alone time for sure yeah um yeah, yeah, yeah. but i think because like with my job i'm not home a lot and i travel a lot that i get to be alone in other places yeah that i'm okay with it for for many things um i'm so much happy I'm, I'm very happy not to be living alone anymore mm -hmm. like there's a lot of things that that make it uh feel well obviously lonely and logistically more difficult and um i do i i do really appreciate being living with someone but mm -hmm. i but but i'm also happy to have had, had the the opportunity mm -hmm. 
right? Yeah. Um, I think like, sure, like if I was um, single when I was older than, and I could have been able to afford it, I think sure it'd been really fun, like decorating your own place with no one else's opinion. Yeah. But I also decorated this place all by myself and did not let out all that opinion. So there you go. The best of both <laughs> worlds. <laughs> <laughs> right. So anyways, we're, we're obviously you and I, uh, in relationships, not looking to go on, on first dates. Um, but um, but yeah, for for listeners out there who who are single and who even appreciate being single, it doesn't mean you can't go on dates even if you're enjoying being single, right? Dating is fun. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's uh, let's start by how to find a date, right? Start with that at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, well, how did how did you and Avril uh, meet? By the way, like how did you? It's such a weird story. Like, there's so many little aspects to it. But, like, technically, we were co-workers. We both worked at Walmart together. Oh, yeah, true, 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 true. But I don't really ever remember interacting with him at Walmart. Um, But he got invited to my 18th birthday party. I was having, like, a huge house party. Oh, yeah. And then, like, he got my number from someone, texted if he can bring a friend. I just remember him as, like, the guy with a girl's name. (laughs) <laughs> and I thought it was like Ashley for some reason he showed up long story short two years after that we actually started dating but we were like talking in yeah. those two years was there a first date like was there someone who invite like texted the other like hey do we want to go on a date um yeah so soon after the party I was like kind of curious about him so I told him to come over and he did and then like it was so awkward because we were like hanging out and then my phone just stopped working okay and like it was it was a very it was awkward um then i just had no phone for like weeks so we never even followed up with each other interesting and then i got a new phone i was like it's kind of too late and weird to text him yeah but then i bumped into him it was so, it's it's like not the usual dating story yeah um, yeah he did take me out on like a couple dates after that, but it was like, like we went out to eat and like we went out on a little hike, but it was like he was moving. Right. So I never thought I would, he, would, he was moving across the country. So I never thought it was someone I would date. date. Yeah. 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 So like, I wouldn't say like I've had the like real adult dating experience. Yeah. That's where cool. like he picks you up in his car. He pays for everything. You go home, you wait for a text. Yeah. <laughs> fair very fair um okay so how we're gonna do this almost for like every category is that i went to get a bunch of um internet a- uh, advice and we could discuss it and you can tell me if you agree or not um, oh my god right perfect this is gonna be so controversial i'm also making you work so much this episode for an episode of me like, i know um, you asked me to get pen and paper i did because we have to remember which what's the first the ideal data you're gonna quiz me about the stats later <laughs> all right so how before before we see what the internet has to say, how would you go about finding a date? Say you were in that position again. Uh, I think I would go the apps, or I would. No, I think I would go the apps. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Because, yeah. Because um, I mean, so this is what the internet has to say. Okay, um, the number of users on dating apps keep growing every year. So basically, that means that the largest percentage of your dating pool is basically on the apps. Yeah, I'm not surprised. So, I mean, it would it would be going out of your way to avoid it, to not go the apps way. Exactly. So since we're making this easy and chill and stupid, I would just go with the apps as well. But say you wanted to meet people in real life, um, People recommend single events, so like speed dating and mixers. Yeah. I must admit, I've always been curious about speed dating. That's one thing I always wanted to try. Yeah. I think I'm curious about speed dating as well, but I don't know if I'd want to try it. I think there would be just so much pressure. I'm also very cautious about people that goes to singles event. (laughs) Yeah, exactly, right? (laughs) Right. Um. I feel like that's this and the same. It's like, oh, like it's something I'd want to do, but I I think I'd judge everyone there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. 
it's like those PR events, like those uh, work mixers event, mm -hmm. like going to make contacts and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It feels like that kind of same kind of vibe of like sharks, like um, taking this way too seriously kind of thing. Yeah, like a lot of like networking, you know, and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, networking. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, how about jo joining a local group, like a sports group or a book club? Um, a bit like we talked on uh, our uh, Chosen Family um, episode. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, that could be a good way to meet people. But yeah. also, you know, if you j join that group, you'll know instantly if there's anyone who's interesting to you or not. Exactly. There's not like you're going to continue doing this to find, like, unless like you just want to. Um, it's not a growing pool of people much, no? Yeah, exactly. But I think it's really nice because, like, if you're someone who's, like, say, really into, like, rock climbing and you join a rock climbing group and you do meet someone, like, you guys know you have that, like, mutual passion for rock climbing, you know? Yeah. And I feel like making friends in general is a good way to meet potential dating people mm -hmm. because then they'll have parties, they'll introduce you to other people. Exactly. I think like if you're single and you are looking for someone, it would be exhausting, but you really have to have like a good social game. Yeah. You know, like yeah, you yeah. have to keep going out, meeting people. If yeah. someone invites you, kind of say yes, because you're like, oh, my potential husband or wife might be there, you know? Yeah. 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 No, it's, uh, it's, you know, well, it's a lot of work, obviously, to, to some people. Mm hmm. Um, how about asking a friend to set you up? Would you be willing to do that? Okay, so that's something like I feel like is very interesting to me. So I think if I like, so my sister and her husband kind of like met through that. Um, my sister went oh. on a trip, like a girls' trip, with her friends, and like this was back when like you know you post your whole vacation album on Facebook. So yeah. her friend did that, and her husband. Um, saw my sister's photos reached out to the mutual friend they had and be like hey like this girl like i'm, I'm interested in this girl like do you mind um like introducing me to her and then that's how they kind of got hooked up on their first date or whatever which is something i think is like a better way to do it i wouldn't go to a friend and be like hey do you have someone for me i would be like like if i saw someone mm. through a photo i'd be like "Ooh, like this person looks interesting and, so like, what you're recommending is creep your friends following on Instagram or on Facebook and then ask them about everyone you find hot. Exactly, 100%. Because we're no longer in those days that we post our full vacation album on Facebook. So now yeah. you have to creep their following and be like, oh, yeah. this guy's hot. You guys follow each other. Okay, let's reach out. Oh, you know what would be good? You know, on um, uh, Instagram, I think you could go on someone's profile and like see the pictures they were tagged in. Yes. So that maybe is a good way to do it. Exactly. It's kind of creepy, but I'm not mad at it. I think I think it's a good way to do it because you can't, like, I don't know. Like, I feel like what you find attractive is what you know. Unless it's, like, a bestie, I think it'd be hard to reach out to, like, just some acquaintance and be like, hey, do you know anyone? Yeah, and then your friend can give you, like, instant feedback of, like, hey, I think you, you guys would like each other. It's like, no, I don't think you'd be a match. Yeah, but I think also being that mutual friend is a lot of pressure because you should, like, I personally think, like, you should have bet vetted out both the people before you hook them up. What if you know mm -hmm. one of them's, like, not a good person, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very fair. And also, like, if it doesn't work out, then it's awkward. Exactly. How about hiring a matchmaker? I think that's very interesting, like, uh, have you watched the TV show um, on Netflix? No, I want to, but Indian we cancel our Netflix, our Netflix uh, subscription and yeah. didn't get to it yet. I haven't watched the newest seasons, but I have watched like the first and I believe second one. Mm. Um, it's very interesting. Like matchmaking is very common in um, India. Yeah, um, it's through like the aunties. Like usually, you just go like go to an auntie and be like oh do you know someone for my daughter and then she'll be like yes i know this person and then they do the matchmaking but this lady is like an actual matchmaker and she has yeah. a lot of like bio data so that just just like yeah i don't know like uh, but like but they bio. also exist they also exist um everywhere yeah um i don't know if i would go that route but i think if you have the money 
I think it's it. a money thing. For yeah. sure. For sure. Um, I wouldn't go that route because I'm like on paper. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I have a very modest job. I don't own a home or anything. I'm like, who are they going to match me with? <laughs> That's so funny. You're worried about yourself. You're like, I don't look good on paper. <laughs> I know. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. So in person, you know, maybe asking a friend to set you up with someone that, you know, they're friends with. I like yeah. that. I like that route. Mm-hmm. Um, on online dating apps, I think is still the easiest way to do it for me. Yeah. Um, but online dating apps can be very different for, uh, straight catered apps versus gay catered apps, or even like the straight space and the gay space and the, in the same apps. Mm-hmm. So a lot of gay apps cater to what they refer as to tribes. So for example, like bear, twings, your jocks, your chasers, your gainers. So they're either like the whole app is subdivided into those categories, like the app cater only to one category, mm-hmm. or on an app that's more um, uh, broad, you'll choose in your profile what kind of tribe. I say tribe. I don't like the term tribe for it, but that's the term that they often use in those apps Mm -hmm. um, you belong to. And what's interesting is that the AI that does like kind of like the, um, the matchmaking or to like that, that like pulls up specific profiles for you and stuff like that will relate to those. We'll use those tribe data. Right. Whereas on straight apps, um, it's more, based on your interests, your dislike, your hobbies, your likes, your, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's already much, much more um, physical on the gay apps, right? Mm-hmm. Um, profile pictures on the gay apps are a lot more revealing that they are on the straight apps also. Yeah. And there's a lot of um, expectation to like share your nudes on the gay apps. Like, yeah. It's very, very common. To a point where, like, you can save an album of your favorite nudes for, like, quick share for afterwards, right? Which is so uncommon. Like, I think it's almost, like, frowned upon if you're asking for nudes on the app. Right? I know. I know. So there's obviously very different expectations. Um, There's also a lot of discrimination based on on stereotypes and fetishizing, Mm -hmm. either, like, racial or, or otherwise. So you'll see a lot of, like, no Asians, no fat, no femmes, black guys only, or mask for mask, or fit for same, stuff like that. Um, it's very common on the on the gay apps, unfortunately, mm-hmm. which can make it a feel like a um, very unsafe space for a lot of people. Yeah. Right? So I feel like a lot of people, for those reasons, might choose... Uh, to try in real life meet meetings, um, if their if their dating goals are are more relationship based than than sexual, right? Mm-hmm. Um, unsolicited picks are also almost expected on 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 gay apps. Wow. Yeah. It's and- so different than like straight app dating. I'm very um, I'm not surprised, but I'm like comparing it side by side. I'm very surprised, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And. It's like they're like almost the opposite, right? So looking for a hookup is the default on gay apps, where mm-hmm. at, and and you have to very specify and insist if you're looking for a dating or relationship. Mm-hmm. Versus on straight app, dating and looking for a relationship is a default, and you have to specify if you're only looking for hookups, right? Yeah. Um, they also have like um a very specific culture around them, and that's very true for both gay and date date. The, uh, gay and straight app. Sorry, <laughs> I couldn't <laughs> think of the other word. <laughs> so, um, which I didn't know, but apparently Tinder in the UK is also very geared towards hooking up. It's it's much more of the hookup culture. Okay, and I feel like that's how it's becoming in like North America now as well. Like it's more like people go to Hinge or Bumble than right. Tinder. So those are more for dating, right? Yeah. But what's interesting is that Tinder for gay men is much more of the dating app interesting isn't it yeah Yeah. so you know keep that in mind when you're choosing the the right app for you also yeah um i would say try not to limit yourself to one type like i know that everyone has their preference and 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 their type but be open to meeting many people when dating um because worst that can happen is that you're sitting across from someone and there's no chemistry 
but also, you know, I, no, I want to say this is true for everyone. I think it, it, it's, it's, I think people are, are fooling themselves if they say that that's not true for them. Mm-hmm. There's so much more to sexual attraction than just physical. Mm-hmm. Right. So I think, you know, you're missing out on sinning across from someone who you're really, really attracted to, but doesn't correspond to you the type of pictures you would like on Instagram typically. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, just if, if you're, if you're not, if it's not a hookup situation, if you're just going to have a drink with someone to be open to, to, to different types, right. Also your types change over time. Like it's, it's nothing, it's, it's not, it's, it's fluid. So let it be fluid. I totally agree. And like a lot of the times people are like, Oh, this is like, this is my type usually. That person's not my type, so I'm not going to go for it. And it's mm. like, wait, there's a reason why your type hasn't been working out for you. Mm-hmm. Explore other types, you know? And yes. I think that's so important sometimes. Like, obviously, yeah. I'm not telling you if, like, your usual type is, um, I don't know. Like, actually, I like, don't know. I don't have an example for that one. Like criminals? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Right? Like if like, you're only dating uh, through uh, prison pen pals. <laughs> exactly. If you're usually dating through prison pen pals, then maybe try someone who's not in prison, you know? Maybe that'll yeah. work out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And like try to identify like your dating patterns also and, mm-hmm. and, and try to purposefully break them for that reason, right? Yeah. Like so if you're for example, going to unavailable, unavailable people over and over again, like... And then wondering try why it's not, not working to. out for you. Try not to, you know, right? try someone who's available. And also maybe question why you go always for that specific type that's not working out. Exactly. And and discuss it in therapy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've had this talk, actually, you and I, the, the other day, where like, I refuse to date someone who never went to therapy in their life. Yes. Right. So do the same for yourself. And You'll be a better dating candidate. Um, yeah, I just because like I had a friend and like someone was like, "Oh, this guy's like looking for a girlfriend. He's looking mm-hmm. for someone who's not too woke and isn't in therapy all the time." And I was blown away. I'm like, "Wait, isn't that what you want?" <laughs> right? Yes, that's why we talked about that. That's true. Uh, mm-hmm. That blows my mind. Insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Okay, so now you chose the right app. Quickly, you'll create a profile. I have some interesting stats for you too, and I thought this was fascinating. Apparently, having a black and white photo on your profile will increase your chances of swipe, right? Of of, of being contacted or selected or, or tapped or woofed or whatever. That is by, so weird. By 106%. Oh my God. Yeah, so quickly, you know, make one of those pictures black and white people. <laughs> Wait, what is the stat from? Because I'm thinking black and white photos like from like, you know, like the early 2000s. So I don't have any references in this episode, mostly because so many of the sources I would find were just all giving the same advice. Okay. So I was like, you know, I don't feel like I'm pledging. One random anything. person once wrote it on the internet and now everyone's copying it. <laughs> kind of. No, but there's there's a lot of real stats in it. Yeah. Um, there's also websites that you can test your pictures. So you'll, you'll upload them. And I think some are user-based, some are AI-based. And they'll tell you like, oh, that's a good picture to use on a dating app. Some, this is not. That's so interesting. Right? Hey, I'll throw advice out there. Don't use those AI filtered photos, please. Oh, seriously. Seriously. So tacky. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just, you know, put yourself out there. Um, and then... There's a lot of advice that I didn't like. It says like, you know, find a good opener. Don't just like say, hi, how was your weekend? That's so boring. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, honestly, if they're interested, they'll answer. And then you just, you know, start the conversation with whatever they answer. But, you know, I don't think you need the great pickup line or the perfect opener and stuff like that. That again, it goes in the realm of taking it way too seriously. Mm -hmm. Right. But I would say, like, try and use, like, a photo at least that's, like, looks like you, a recent one. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's no point catfishing people. It's just going to backfire. And, like, something that's also your personality. Like, if you're not someone who goes out all the time, don't use a photo of you partying, you know? 
Uh, <laughs> oh, good advice. If you yeah. hate hiking, maybe don't use a photo of you hiking. Yeah. Um, and always, 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 if you have animals, if you have an photos with animals, use animal photos. I yeah. feel like, unless you hate animals, but like most people like like that, you know? What about a picture with a baby that's not yours? What do you I think? think like that? I think like that's all subjective. Like if you want kids, if you like kids, then don't do go for it, even if it's not your baby. Yeah. Um, but if you don't like kids and you don't want kids in the future, maybe don't hold a picture. Don't yeah. post a picture with kids. You know. Fair. Fair. Why, why do you think that's a red flag if someone has a like, baby that's not yours? Um, it depends. I think the context is very different. But no, I think that's really adorable. I I love a man holding a baby. I'm 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 all I'm I'm all for it. Like yeah, like as long absolutely. as it's like not a family picture with your wife cropped out or something, your ex wife or something, you know. <laughs> That'd be so creepy. <laughs> all right, and then you know, just shoot your shot. Just don't be afraid of rejection. Um, if anything, you know, embrace it. It's it's a numbers game, and and you're if someone just rejects you politely. Mm -hmm. Just move on to the next person, right? Um, but yeah, yeah. I just and I would say like, go, like propose a date if that's what you want fairly early in the conversation. Mm -hmm. There's no point doing big back and forth and having these huge discussions stuff like that. Totally. So I've listened to a lot of dating podcasts, even though I haven't dated much. Uh, but like something I always like tell my friends that are looking like making dating profiles is like have like an open bio instead of having like, you know, specifically what I'm looking for. And that's it. Like have something that will make people want to start a conversation with you. Because isn't it so much nicer when someone goes like, oh, your favorite movie is this? So is mine. As opposed to, hey, how are you? You know, when yeah. they message you. Um on the yeah. app and then yeah like i totally agree keep the app conversations to a minimum like obviously if you're connecting keep connecting but like take it outside the app as soon as you can just mm -hmm. so you can connect in real life and see if you have a connection i think what they say in like most dating podcasts is like a lot of people will end up talking too much through text or the app or whatever and they basically live out a whole relationship through there so then when they meet in real life, there isn't a much of a connection because you've shared everything already, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's fair. But also, I don't think that would be a problem if you were bond to have a connection with that person in the first place. Mm -hmm. Right? But no, I would say just, you know, you, you don't want to waste any time. Just figure out if there's something there in person as soon as you can. Mm -hmm. Right? I agree. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, just if they say they're interested in meeting, set a date right away. Okay, cool. When? I'm free that day. Mm -hmm. Right? All right. So now you've, they're interested. They want to see you. You have to propose a date. Let's find, uh, let's talk about where to go on a date. <laughs> um, off the top of your mind, where, where would you take someone on a date? On a first date? Um, first date, I would say like, like keep it easy. Like, I wouldn't have a full commitment mm. um, like a coffee shop or like a bar for like drinks or something. Yeah. I think is the easiest. Maybe like an activity would be fun. So you kind of get to know them, but I wouldn't do like an activity and dinner or anything. Yeah. Okay. This is what I like about a coffee shop or a bar is that you start with a drink, especially a pub. I think pub for me is ideal, but if you're not drinking, uh, you could do a coffee shop, but I like mm -hmm. a place with a waiter, a waiter, because you start with a drink, mm -hmm. and then the waiter comes around to offer a new drink, and that's your opportunity to decide: Do I want the date to keep going or not? True. Yeah. And then they come around again, and you could be like, "Hey, do you want to eat something? I'm a bit hungry," and they True, could turn exactly. into a dinner, or it could end there, or it could yeah. end after the third drink. You know, like you have many opportunities to end it exactly yeah i totally agree. and also to assess like do are they having fun do they want to keep going yeah i agree right okay um there's this show on netflix i believe i watched this like 2020 like covid prime covid it's called dating around oh i Have saw that i didn't i that's like when i was doing my research i wanted to look at that one 
But um, then I realized, yeah, we didn't renew our membership. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, it's really good. Like, I don't really love um, Love is Blind that much, but I like love reality TV shows. But this is not really a reality TV show. It's literally you're just a fly on the wall while two strangers are on a date. Oh, I like that. And there's like no pressure really like they don't like get famous from the show either. I think it's just genuinely people on a date and it's so good to just watch the way people behave. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I, I love this show. I wish they, I don't think they have more seasons of it. I don't know. I just watched the first um, season or the second season, I believe, okay. but it's so good. I really liked watching it. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll try to find it somewhere else. Maybe that sounds good. Is it mm-hmm. American? I believe so. Yeah. And I think that, like, Brazil has a season two. Okay, cool. I'll look into it. Mm -hmm. Um, The internet had a lot to say about where to go on a first date. So let's do, like, a little uh, rabbit fire around here. Okay. Um, Oh, I found this Medium article that says walking through a cemetery. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I know. Uh. (laughs) It's going to be a no for me, but I think yeah. if you both are like into like ghosts and seances, why not? So they were saying like more like a, a famous historical one, but still I'm like, it doesn't have to be that. Um, rock climbing. Murder vibes. Yeah. <laughs> rock climbing. Okay. So I'm going to answer this on my behalf, but like, you know, if you're a huge rock climber, do it. But I think no. No. I don't think Even I'd be the cutest one. Rock, rock climber, climber, it's too. Um, you can't talk as much. Exactly, right? That's the thing. Yeah, I get that. Roller coasters. I can see that being cute. I'll say yes. Uh, yeah, I can see it being cute. And there is stuff to ha- there is places to hang out afterwards at the fair. Yeah, go get ice cream or something yeah. after. The interesting one about this is that psychologically <laughs> speaking, apparently fear is very good for attraction. Like, Putting someone in a situation where they um, res- like uh, experience fear mm-hmm. also uh, creates arousal. Ooh. So apparently, um, and I think that's why like um, scary movies is a popular one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, what about the movie theater? Do you think it's a good first date? Personally, no, just because you don't get to talk much. No, I think it's hor- horrible. And then afterwards, there's nowhere to go. Yeah. No, I don't. But like then it. it could be cute, like if you're like hands meet in the popcorn or something. I would say a good second or third date, but not first. Yeah. Uh, going to a fortune teller. <laughs> yeah, why not? I think it could be a double-edged sword. What if like yeah. they give you something terrible about your future? <laughs> Yeah, if you're like, if you don't take it too seriously, maybe, but. Yeah. Yeah. Again, all of these, I'm like, sure, it's a good idea to afterwards end up in a pub or a cafe. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, Escape room. No. Terrible. Terrible. You're going to yell at each other the whole time. Yeah, exactly. Like, you guys don't know how you work with each other yet, you know. (laughs) Right. Uh, Karaoke. No. No. Especially if you can't sing. Or if exactly. I think it's worse if you can sing. It feels like showing off. Exactly, right? <laughs> Maybe uh, if you met in like a singing group or something, you know. Yeah. This one I think I like arcades. Oh yes. I, I mean I just love arcades in general. They're so fun, but I think that would be so yeah. fun as a date. Like an arcade exactly. bar. You know, yeah. you're having drinks, you'll go play Pac Man for a little bit or like yeah. shoot some hoops. We went there for your birthday um, yeah. when I was in Vancouver. And I was thinking to do it again this year for my birthday. I think that's, I just love arcade bars. Yeah, it's a fun one. Yeah, for sure. Um, bike riding. I think a bike ride in a picnic. Why not? Yeah, could be cute. Drag show. Could uh, be again, cute, like, you're at a bar. you don't get to talk much, though. True, exactly. That'd be kind of respectful, uh, disrespectful. Mm-hmm. But, like, maybe show up early for a drink, watch the show, head home. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this one I think I like. Thrift store shopping. Yes, but like, like I like thrift store shopping, but I don't know if I'd want to know for a first date, shopping for a first date. Yeah. I feel like the other person would feel pressured to like pay for something. I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah. So, okay, my it's not my first date with Justin. My first date with Justin was um, in a pub. 
mm-hmm. and it was like it, it it was perfect for the reasons that I mentioned and we ended up eating and afterwards we took a walk it was really nice mm-hmm. um, but our second and third date were to me absolutely wonderful and like my favorite dating um uh setting we went to ikea perused ikea showrooms yeah and then ate at the cafeteria that is so cute i'm in for that one right especially if you've recently like moved in and stuff well that's the thing like for me i needed to go anyways yeah and he loved ikea as much as i did so i was like oh that's so fun that is really cute right Mm -hmm. yeah i thought i thought that was fun um but the okay, the the other reason why I'm so pro pub or a place with service because I really want to observe how they treat the uh, service workers. I totally agree. So that would be the downside for IKEA. It's like a cafeteria, just not really service workers. I and I think like running an errand like IKEA together, perfect second third date. First yeah. date, you want to be face to face, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, volunteer at a dog shelter. <laughs> really cute, but I would say like get coffee before or after. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then w- this one, cook together. I think, okay, for me personally, horrible. Like if I'm cooking, I don't want anyone helping me. You're in the way. <laughs> and also, it feels too intimate for a first date. Oh, yeah. This would be like a good first date if you've already been friends already, I feel like. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I like that. I that. Yeah. Yeah. Or if like you, like you, you met in a party, you've already met them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. During the pandemic, we had a lockdown in Montreal. Mm-hmm. So I had to have uh, a few first dates at home. Mm-hmm. And it was really awkward because... It was locked down after 8 p.m. So it was kind of like either leave really early or commit to staying over and sleeping over. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's Um, that's too much. I think like unless like, you know, this person from before, it's not very safe. It's a huge commitment to just host someone. You know, what if they don't want to leave when you want them to leave when you're not feeling it, you know? Yeah. And they're super into it. Yeah. I fully leaned into it and I made sure that it, it felt like a very safe space for them to just hang out and, and, and sleep over afterwards and, and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, but not most well, of my favorite dates. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, all right. So what's the verdict? What are we saying is uh, our number one? Bar, pub. Yeah. Right. Coffee. Pub. If you don't drink. Yeah. I think I would still go for a pub if you don't drink. Maybe find one with like non-alcoholic beers or something like that mm-hmm. because of that service portion. Yeah. But and you just sit, find like a thing. nice sit down like cafe. Yeah, but the waiters don't come to see Oh, you. yeah, true. That is true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. So now you have to, you're okay, you've decided on the pub, you've set a date. Now it's a day of the date. You have to decide what to wear. This is so fun. I feel like I'm dating. I, um, I almost wish we had a real guinea pig to like figure all this for. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I would do casual, you know, like jeans and a cute going out top, but like mm-hmm. not like a, you know, like like just something like that's me, but like obviously dressing up a little bit more elevated. Um, yeah. like search the restaurant or whatever wherever you're going before, so you match the vibe almost. Yeah, I would say I would go even further. I would pick a place that has a casual vibe. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I agree. I think that's something that came up often. Also, like go for something that's very you don't go too much out of your uh, comfort zone. And it was almost like don't like um, uh, catfish them into thinking that you're a fashionista when you're actually not exactly you know like, like obviously look good wear makeup if you want but don't do a full face that you don't usually do you know like i agree oh for the makeup yes yeah. i mean i agree but too like i take that with a grain of salt i'm also like you know what do whatever it's fine like people style change all the time true and also like people take style very seriously mm-hmm. i don't think it's that serious at all mm-hmm. right yeah um but 
They say, when in doubt, wear red or black. Because um, in 2018, there was a study of 600 participants on a British reality dating show. They found that black is the most popular color for first dates, regardless of gender. And there was also a study that said that the color red makes men feel more amorous towards women. And men's, men are unaware of the role of the color plays in their attraction, but typically they're more attracted to women who wear red. Yeah. I, I feel like black, red, and white looks good on like most people. Yeah. Yeah. I stay away, away from uh, white usually. If you're messy. I'm super messy. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I agree apparently you're supposed to avoid orange or brown which like i love brown i love like oh, two yeah. brown pants like neutrals like... yeah. yeah yeah okay um and they say avoid looking too trendy i could see that like i could see how some people can perceive it as being high maintenance maybe or or not even high maintenance no um intimidating someone who looks too trendy mm -hmm. yeah but if that's you if you're trendy as fuck on a regular basis do you you yeah. know you don't want to do put off an image just i would say yeah like the overall like answer to this question is do you do something you do on a regular basis so you're not catfishing the person if you do a full face every single day and that's how you feel comfortable do that you know as opposed to like don't wear makeup because you don't want to like put him off like that do you? I don't know if I agree with you. Like, yes, totally. Do you feel comfortable? I feel. I think feel confident is the the, yeah. the main the main thing. But also, like, you don't have to do makeup every day to enjoy going in a full face of makeup going out on a first date, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I like. Why not? Just put some makeup on. Mm -hmm. I would. I think like you know, if if you're not someone who put makeup on often then maybe try to show that other side of you on the second and third date. Mm -hmm. But yeah, why not? Yeah. Yeah. But like, I'm, I think I'm trying to say like, don't go zero to a hundred, go like 50 to mm -hmm. 75, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe don't hire a professional makeup artist. And yeah. Get don't go to Mac style. before. Yeah. 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 Go to Mac. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. Now, what to say on a date, what to talk about. So here, okay, here it says, take it slow. Don't reveal too much about how much you're into them and add it instead, right? And I think like that's a really good flirting advice in general. I'm so sorry. I hope that got cut out, but my cat just knocked over my mic with her tail. <laughs> She's being so cuddly today. Oh, tequila. Sorry, go ahead. Um, yes. So I feel like that's a good flirting advice in general. So like, instead of flat out saying like, oh, I'm so into you. You're so my type. Oh, you look so good. Like, I really like you. I'm having such a good time. Mm -hmm. Like, just you come on their show. It it's like, yeah. oh, those, um, those glasses fit you really well. You know? Yeah. It's like, oh, that's a nice shirt you're wearing. Right. Mm -hmm. Or like, um, you know, just like hint to that you're into it. And mm -hmm. it's like, oh, that was very funny. Um, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Or I haven't yeah. laughed like this in a while. Yeah. And I feel like one thing that I like noticed from the Dating Around show a lot was like ask questions about the other person too. Like, like don't like share what you want to share about yourself. But like also like, you know, if someone goes like, oh, like, what do you like to do? And you talk about yourself. How about you? You know, yeah, yeah. Keep okay. Keep that conversation yes. going. Don't just go on blatantly about yourself. So, one of my favorite advice I saw was on um, Love on the Spectrum. I was watching the U.S. version, and there's they have like this, uh, like this special, this expert that comes to like give them advice before the first date and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And just like, okay, let's do an exercise to learn how to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. And they sat across from each other and they had a ball and they would roll the ball towards each other. And it was like, um, what's something that you really like to do on the weekend? And roll the ball. And the mm -hmm. person would answer, I like going to the zoo. And then roll the ball back. And then 
oh, that's really interesting. I like the zoo too. And roll the ball back. And then you have to like, just, you have to build on what the person told you, basically. Yeah. That's, right? Yeah. Instead of just, and I thought like, so many people don't know how to have a conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, build on what the person told you. Yeah, don't just actually wait around and to be asked. Be like, oh, that's so nice. Like, mm -hmm. get deeper, get curious, ask questions. Don't, like, if you notice that you're t telling them a story for five minutes, shorten it up. Like, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. 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 And um, I think just don't, a lot of people have, like, a lot of questions that they want to get to. Like it's the first date. You don't need to get through to everything. Just like kind of follow the flow of conversation. I would say was more important than mm -hmm. than sharing anything you intended on sharing or asking everything you intended on asking. Um. Also, buy mm -hmm. this icebreaker uh, questions book for adults. <laughs> get the conversation rolling. <laughs> Bring some icebreakers with you. Is that what the book is uh, is titled? Exactly, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, perfect for your church group meetings. Exactly. <laughs> um yeah, yeah, I think so too. And then it said like a lot of people were like, you know, focus on the present, don't share too much about your past just yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good advice. Um ask questions that you I thought this was interesting. Ask questions about what you already know about them. So, for example, if you had conversation on the on the app, um, bring that back to the to the table. Or, like, say you are, you have a friend in common that told you something about them. You can bring that to the table mm -hmm. in a non creepy way. Yeah, something you saw in their bio. Don't bring up what you saw when you creep their Instagram page from yeah. like 2014. You know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so like in uh, in in 2002, you wrote this article online uh, published by the University of Think. Do you want to tell me more about that? <laughs> no, <it's really> <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so then I just I just said not to pay too much uh, attention to your list of question, but let's go into a list of questions that you could ask your date. <laughs> so what what to what to ask them? Um, what are your yeah, hobbies? Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot. We're gonna do a rapid fire round like we did earlier. Okay, perfect. Um, but um, in general, like I think you might want to have an idea of what you want to know about the person. Mm -hmm. Like, and I think that depends. I think that's something you should figure out for yourself, not consult the internet about. Like, it depends a lot on 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 the situation, the person, your intention with the person, your goals in the relationship, and all these things. Mm -hmm. but what i liked is that there was a lot of people over him and you know just find subtle ways to ask your questions that doesn't sound too much like a conversation like an interview and that's more like flow of conversation yeah i agree right. um like if you if you're if you want to be with someone who's like you know more conscious about money because that's something you care about don't be like what's your finances like you know mm -hmm. maybe yeah. just ask like oh like just like observe the way they're like you know like, oh, yeah. do you like to travel a lot? And then they can be like, oh, you know, my money's tight right now. Or like, right. no, I don't really like to travel. Or like, you know, ask different questions that are not right. very intrusive. Or like, what's something, what's what's the one thing that you splurge uh, that yeah. you really treat yourself with? Oh, that's a really yeah. good one. Yeah. Right. Um, and then, yeah, again, you don't need to, to find out everything that's on your list. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't ask questions also that you're not ready to answer yourself because the hope is that they'll ask it back at you also that's a good trick if you have something interesting to say about yourself ask them about them and then hopefully they'll ask the question back to you that'd be so funny so what awards have you won none well i have <laughs> i'm kidding that's a good one <laughs> um that was funny sonia you made me laugh today i haven't laughed like that in a long time <laughs> do you know what you would want to find out about someone before going on, like after during a first date oh yeah i think like i'd want to kind of know like like on a first date like you know what their opinions are on like like what are their hobbies if we mm. share interest in that kind of thing like mm -hmm. yeah yeah i don't know if i'd like that's a good one have too much like obviously i'd kind of want to know like they're pretty like ghost it uh stance on things but i don't think i'd bring that up blatantly i'll just see where things go 
naturally. Yeah. I haven't thought of that actually. Well, it's, it's strange because you date so much and so often. Exactly. Do you think that you'd have those answers already? Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, that's one that's delicate. But there's a certain uh, political stance that I want to, I would like to try to figure out in a subtle way. Mm -hmm. Um, we've already covered it, but I, I'd like to know if they've already went to therapy in their life. Oh, yeah. I also would like to know if they have siblings. Oh, that's a really good question. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. But therapy one, how would you bring that up? So have you been to um, therapy? That's a really good question. How would I bring that up? I mean, Justin and I talked about it so much on our first date. We like really like even like trauma dumped on each other. <laughs> um, but but he's uh, he at, he's studying psychology, so it was easy to bring up. Yeah, I think it's also like it's also like it the way the conversation flows. You know, mm -hmm. if yeah, exactly. Yeah. If trauma comes up and one person wants to share, and you also want to share yours, do it. You know, don't mm -hmm. be like, oh well, I shouldn't tell you this on the first date. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's the way things flow. I think. I think maybe asking someone is like sharing, like, "Oh yeah, I went to therapy today," and then see if they want to kind yeah. of share back. Yeah. Or like, even like, it could be as innocent as like, um, "Oh, like I I love this bakery. It's it's next to my therapist. So every time I go, I I I, I get." I treat myself with a little croissant from there or something like that. Yeah. You know, and I can and see how they react, you know? Yeah, exactly. Okay, but here, here's what the um, the internet had to say. What made you interested in going out with me? Terrible question. I hate it. Um, You know what? I don't disagree with it. Like, I think you can ask that. But I think, like, I think it'd be kind of better if the person naturally shares. Eh. Mm -hmm. and it, it feels it feels like putting the person on the spot but you know what what i'm gonna say is if your love language is like receiving um compliments words of affirmation then ask that you know yeah. and like this kind of make it known to this person i guess but if they agree to go on a date with you um i don't know i don't i don't i don't know if i agree it's like they're on a date with you. They have motivation for being on this date with you. Mm -hmm. Just trust that they're interested. Yeah, true. I wouldn't ask right. that personally, but mm. yeah. Uh, what kind of relationship you're looking for? I think that's a good one. Yeah, I think so too. I think that that's important. Um, I don't like how this one is formulated. What matters to you? Too broad. <laughs> too broad. I think like, I just, I, I'd spiral if someone asked me that. Yeah, I hate, hate, hate with passion. What's your favorite movie? What's your favorite artist? What's I just your asked you that music? today. Um, you did actually. <laughs> it's true, but you didn't ask me that. You asked me what movie did I do I rewatch often? True. I think that's a better question. True. Um, because I don't keep those lists in my head. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, and I'm not about to find out if you put me on the spot. Yeah. Um, but I would say maybe like, oh, you know, what's, what was your latest obsession or, or what's, you know, the, um, the last projects that, that really, you know, kept you up at night or something like that. You know, um, like, what are you passionate about? I agree. Like, I think like when someone asks me what's my favorite movie, I'm too, like too broad. I don't have one favorite movie. But like, if someone asked me what's the movie, I, good movie I watched recently, that's a really good question, you know? Yeah, yeah, right. Um, or even like the, the the, just don't look further than the icebreaker questions that we had today. Like mm -hmm. that's perfect. What's a movie that you rewatch often? That's a great question. We should totally get sponsored by this Amazon. Oh my god! Book. Absolutely. <laughs> but like, let's research the author first. There's no author <laughs> on it either. Oh my god. <laughs> uh what what do you think of a recent political event is there something that stands out to you um i don't know i think that's very hard because it is something you want to know right like their mm -hmm. political view but it's like are you ready to have this conversation 
Mm-hmm. Um, it's difficult. Yeah, but if it's something that really matters to you, I would say go for it. Yeah, it's difficult because I understand that in today's climate, you need to know these things to be able to feel safe often. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I would find maybe more subtle ways to asking this. Yeah. Um, when you spend time with someone, how often are you the one making the plans? That's horrible. Like it's so pointed an interview and it's yeah. so easy to give the right answer even if it's not the right answer. Yeah, it the doesn't right, feel if natural, it's not the real answer. Really. No. Um, what do you think is the most important thing for a healthy relationship? Too broad? Too broad. Too relationship-based also. Yeah. This one I really like. Who is the person you talk to the most? Okay. Like, I or or like I would even go like who's the person you send to you send memes to the most? Yeah. Like talk tell me about your friends. I want to know that. That's that's cute. Yeah. And that's a good way to judge someone also. Yeah, but like I like tell me about your friends a bit more than just ask like who's your bestie, you know? Right. Okay, tell me about your friends. That's yeah. That's broad, but, you know, maybe you want some broad questions also to see how someone can handle a broad question. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. What didn't work out in your last relationship? Personally, I think I, I would be like, when was your last relationship? Or tell me about your last relationship. Asking what yeah, didn't I, work out just seems a little too negative. Yeah. I think that's also something that can be slipped in the conversation if the conversation goes there. Yeah. But I wouldn't make a goal out of asking that question yeah. on the first date. Yeah. Right? Because, like, I think also, like, like people, we can commit to a second date without knowing too much about the person. Like, it doesn't have to be, you know, my time is money and my time is so precious. I need to know now if you're worth a second date kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You know, did you had a did you have a good time? Do you want to know to get to know them more? Go on a second date. Yeah, you know? I think it's a bit serious to ask these all these relationship goals and stuff like that um, in the first in the first date. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the most embarrassing thing you can remember that happened to you? Oh God, I like that a lot. Really? Yeah, I think I think for me it would be important to have someone who can laugh at themselves. Yeah, true. Right. Um, what's something you're proud of? I think I like that a lot. I don't know if I like that on my first date. I don't know mm. if I like that. Mm. Okay, it's too serious. Yeah, like I'm trying to think of something I'm proud of right now, and I'm like, uh, <laughs> like I'm sure. What about this wonderful things. project that we started together? Yeah, exactly. But like, I think these kind of questions are like the ones that you have to think about, and they seem to interview. Right? They should just come up naturally. I do get that. I do agree with that. Yeah. 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 Um, then this, I think I like also, if you find some good ones, would you rather, any would you rather question? I love would you rather questions. I know. I think I could do this for hours. And you can kind of make it like fun to make it like a drinking game out of it or, mm. well, be careful like how much you drink on that. But yeah, exactly. I love would you rather questions. I ask so many. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, this one's pretty intense. Do you have a secret hunch about how you're going to die? <laughs> I think if you're, uh, if you're dating someone, what is it when they can see into the future? Uh, uh psychic? Yeah, exactly. That's perfect. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I think we kind of agree. Something really kind of more less serious less i think first date is not the time necessarily to check off some some um like check out some things off your list Mm -hmm. i would keep it more to see do you have chemistry are you able to have fun with this person Mm -hmm, exactly and then maybe check some stuff off your list more on the second date totally cool sweet uh okay let's talk about some red flags oh god what would be some uh, red flags on a first date for you? Or better yet, do you ever 
Oh, well, you didn't date much. Mm -hmm. Did um, did Avril give you some red flags that you you had to address on the first uh, few dates? I don't think so. But no. I, I don't remember so long ago. I don't think I knew what red flags were back then. Fair. Very fair. Uh, but I think, like, some red flags that I could see on a date is how they treat the server. Oh, yeah. That's a really good one. Yeah. How they treat the server, for sure. Um, you know, if they get drunk on the first date. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, f I feel like if we're both having a blast and getting lit. Yeah. Maybe, but also, I don't know if I would want that first date to that to last that long mm -hmm. to be to begin with. Yeah, that one's yeah obviously situational. But like to me, yeah. it's kind of like if like how they can keep the conversation going. Are they asking me questions about their self? That like about mm -hmm. myself? Are they re revealing information about themselves? Um, yeah. But like, yeah. I think a red flag would be like, hey, if I'm chat like talking and they're on their phone. Yeah. You know, like, are, are yeah. they paying attention to me? Yeah. If I'm the one carrying the whole conversation, I hate that. Absolutely not. A huge red flag for me, if they're not laughing at my jokes. <laughs> 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 Massive red flag. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, okay, here's um, something I did in secret. Um I removed you from, uh, I hid my stories from you <gasps> so that I could ask your, our Instagram followers to give me some of their date, uh, dating horror stories. That is so funny. Wait, this is your personal Instagram or our Instagram? Uh, my, my, my personal Instagram. That is so funny. Oh my God. That's a great <laughs> job. Thank you. So we have one that was shared here. Um, he invited me to an expensive restaurant. But he wanted to dine and dash. No. And then uh, the person followed up with me and said that like they had to pay in the end because the they it, it was like dine and dash or nothing. They didn't bring the money. No. That's horrible. Could you imagine someone who's like literally expects you to come into crime with them on the first date? That is so weird. Okay, wait. Actually, I remember I went on this date. I think. Yeah, in high school. Okay. And it was uh, to the movies. And yeah. um, um, I thought I was getting stood up because I'm texting this guy. Like, I was meeting him at the movies. I'm at the movies waiting outside. I'm like, where are you? And he's like, oh, I'm here. But, like, not texting back fast enough. I'm very confused. Then he right. goes like, oh, I'm at the front. Couldn't see him at the front. I'm like, what is happening? And he's like, wait, no, come to the side door. And I was like, What? And he's like, oh, go outside and come to the side door. And like straight up, like I, like I knew him from high school. We went to high school together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I was just very confused. I was like, what do you mean the side door? So he made me exit the movie theater, come out to the side, wait by an emergency exit. And he opened the emergency exit for me to let me in. Because he didn't want to pay for your ticket? I guess so. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, what is this? He snuck me into the movie theater. Oh, that's not a good look. So awkward. I yeah, I hate that. Um, never like ended up dating this guy, but good thing because there were a lot of red flags that came out about him later. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a uh, one person who shared. This is a friend of, in common of ours who shared. Let's see if uh, you'll tell me later if you're able to guess who. Okay. Who shared a red flag that day did on a first date? Person brought them to uh, the restaurant. And they told them that this is where I took my Tinder date last week. Oh, so awkward. <laughs> right? Maybe keep that information for yourself. Yeah. That's so <laughs> awkward. This one has very little context, but getting my face sniffed for five minutes. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping it was more of a like. I hope they want to date with a dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way that would be okay right um let's see everything in their house smelled like old dried milk cartons ew. and they served uncooked meat for supper ew ew that, not red that's, that's not even a red flag that's like a hazard this person needs to be reported to poison control <laughs> 
that's such a specific smell that I like. I know exactly what it smells like. I know. Old dried milk cartons. Oh my god, we throw up. Oh god. Right? Absolutely not. Um, he lied about his face pics and had a very big scar on his face. Aww. I know that one made me sad. Also, it's like they're He's clearly like insecure they're... about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but that is something you'd want to share with someone, you know. I, I, that's the thing. It's still like you. It's you want to be upfront about that. Mm-hmm. I would think, mm-hmm. you know, if something happened, don't share the before picture and then. You know, Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's a tough one for me. I would like, it's okay. Like I would share the before picture, but I also would have one picture in there with the scar. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, or at least I would address it in the, in the online conversation. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's a rough one. Yeah. That's rough. Uh, Went to his place after the date and accidentally elbowed him in the forehead while undressing. (laughs) That sounds like me, but I promise it's not me. Yeah, that's really funny. I like that. (laughs) Um, I have two of my personal ones that I wanted to share. Yes. Okay, so this one, I was so exasperated. Took me to um, a very nice restaurant, a first date also. Very nice restaurant. Wore a suit uh, and and everything to the restaurant. Um, I don't remember who paid or if we split split the bill but i was carrying the entire conversation i was asking wonderful questions i'm actually surprisingly really good at dating mm-hmm. i ask really good questions the conversation like flows and they were not carrying their weight at all they were not even ask like all they had to do and say what about you yeah. what about you and they weren't doing that oh so annoying so Towards the end of the date, I got sick of it and just like, you know what? Just going to wait and see if they ask me a question. Mm -hmm. And then I wait and I wait and I wait. Silence becomes too awkward for me to handle. Oh, God. So I say, well, is there anything else you'd like to know about me? And you know what they answered? What's your favorite color? Oh, so awkward. After we had such wonderful conversation about their career, their family, their favorite place to live, the the their their, their hobbies, yeah, and all they have to ask me is what's my favorite color. I was like, mm, nope. It sounds this like is... they like dated, like googled ha- dating questions, and that's what they got. And they're like, they don't know how to keep a conversation going, but they're like, okay, I can ask them this one question, you know. <laughs> Dated uh, Google dating questions. Like I Google dating questions and then and, and yeah, I that didn't so even come up. The other ones. Like dating questions for yeah. five years old, you know? Oh my Ugh. god. I know. That's painful. And then this other one was actually quite traumatizing. They took me to a park. Um, first date again. Spent the whole time discussing how they were in a very legal, like a very stressful legal feud where they're with their ex in laws. Um, and how their ex-in-laws were going after their house and stuff like that because their husband had just died a month ago. And I guess the will wasn't clear or up to date or whatever, but they told me that their husband had just died a month ago. Oh, my God. And complained the whole time about how they're about to lose the house and everything and how the in-laws are after the money. They did seem very sad about the husband dying, but very stressed about like, and I was like, What? Oh, what are what am I doing here? That's so awkward. Like, why are we on a date? I I have so many questions. Like, how did your husband die? Did you kill them? <laughs> oh, oh uh, apparently god. a heart attack on the toilet or something like that. Um, but oh my god. But yeah, the first thing that went to my mind is like mm, something is shady here. Yeah, like like I guess people have different mourning periods, but at the same yeah. time, I'm like, if you're so worked up about your in laws taking your house. But clearly not about your husband dying. That you, and you're like no. you're not talking. Ugh, that's so weird. Yeah, and I'm, I mean, but mostly the red flag was like we should not be on a date. I don't care about like everyone move on at different paces and blah blah and all this. Mm-hmm. No, a month ago is not it's too soon. Mm-hmm. Crazy. <sighs> yeah. Um, okay. What about some green flags? Uh, First date. Completely situation. What? How did the? 
did 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 one make you say, "Oh, I'm gonna give this guy another chance. Like, I'm gonna give this guy another date with Arrow." Oh my god, it's so long ago. I don't. So, like, I think our situation is very different because we like dated just for fun almost, and then decided mm-hmm. to be together when he was across the country and we were texting. Yeah. Um, but I think we just had that connection. Yeah. Um, he's very easy to talk to. Yeah. Oh my god. I'm you like... guys had like good conversations stuff like that. Exactly. That's... Yeah. That's a huge green flag for me. Easy conversation. For Easy me. conversations. And it's always, I think like a huge thing is that like, you're not all going to connect with the same person, you know, you can have someone mm-hmm. easy to talk to, but like have a connection. I think there's like a lot of um, like, or like the way we were grew up is very similar and stuff like that. So like that, mm. like our backgrounds and all of that really, I think was a great green flag for me. He loves animals. That's the biggest green flag. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if they laugh genuinely during the date, mm-hmm. uh, for me, it's a green flag also. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, it, it, Avril's biggest green flag is that he thinks I'm the funniest person in the world. Sold. <laughs> fell in love immediately. That's a red he... flag. He's delusional and can't <laughs> like his mental health. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is one that's like oddly very big for me. It shows a lot about someone's character. If they offer to share their food or have you taste their drink. Oh, yes. Huge green flag. Yes. That's it. I agree. Yeah. I feel like every time I go out to eat like with friends or anything, we're all just swapping our drinks around because I want to taste I everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, if they go to therapy. <laughs> yeah. I really tried to like nail this one in. Yeah. No. Therapy is really yeah. good one. To- like... To me, it's not if they go to therapy, but if they're open to therapy, you know? Yeah. I think that's yeah. uh, a big one for me. I mean, depending on what age. Like, I'm in my mid-30s. You need to do better than being open to therapy. Yeah. Um, I think <laughs> I think another one, um, like, to me is like, oh, my God, I just had it. I took out my tongue. Came from therapy. All right. Well. Oh, <laughs> no, it has nothing to do with therapy. If they can handle a joke, too, like... Oh, being teased a bit. Oh, that's a good exactly, one. Exactly, like, you know, mm-hmm. like, I can make yeah. kind of fun of them, and they can make fun of me, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. If they can... Okay, even more than if they can handle... No, not more. I would say it's very important that they can handle a joke. But if they can roast me, ugh, I love that. Yes. I love that. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Like, I... For me, getting roasted is like, oh, you pay attention to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have some uh, some Reddit stories of some some green flags on first dates. Okay. Here for once, some positive Reddit stories. When my girlfriend and I had our first date, her mom sent her $50 just in case I made her pay. Oh. And since I paid, she made the waiter cry by t- tipping them the whole $50. Oh. Oh, that's so sweet right i'm yeah. like she's like well i had this for dinner he's paying so why don't you take it yeah that's really sweet i know it was really sweet um, for the mom to send him running too i think also yeah, yeah yeah i'm guessing they were like teenagers yeah she was about an hour late however the entire time she was texting me update and telling me exactly at what time she would get there that's that's a really good that's a green flag situation too like sometimes things yeah. happen you get late but like yeah. As long as you're, like, communicating. Exactly. I think so, too. Um, she came to my door and my puppy got excited. Without skipping a beat, she scooped up the dog and asked, where are the three of us going? Oh, I really like that. Yeah, <laughs> especially if, you know, your dog is your world. I like that, too. Exactly. Um, first date, she was driving us to a spot to go hiking. About an hour drive, we were talking and talking, but every once in a while, we wouldn't be talking, and it just felt so comfortable and not awkward to be in silence together. That's really cute. Yeah. That's surprising for a first date, but yeah, comfortable silence is definitely a green flag for me, too. Mm-hmm. He took me to an amateur stand-up comedy night. He was heartily laughing at all the jokes. They were so bad, not funny at all. I was planning not to go on another date with him because his 
sense of humor was obviously bad. And as we're walking to the car, he commented how bad everyone was. But he wanted to encourage them, so he laughed at everyone's joke anyways. That's really sweet. That's so cute. That's really sweet. I like that. But also never go to a comedy club on a first date. Yeah. Or never go to a comedy club in general. It's so awkward. I love comedy <laughs> clubs. What are you talking about? I can't stand it. I'm so afraid of someone bombing. I'm like my secondhand uh, embarrassment is so strong. Okay, amateur comedy it. night. Yeah, I agree. But I think I would be that guy. I'd still laugh and smile the whole time. Like, you're doing great, honey. Like, I know you do it to me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mentioned an activity I'd thought about for our first date, but ultimately they decided against it. She said we should go on a second date. That's I, cute. Yeah, yeah, that's cute too. It's like, I definitely like the idea of someone showing interest for a second date right away. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. I, I, I dated this guy who did something I really appreciated. Pretty much the only thing I appreciated about this person. But at the end of every date, he would pull up his phone and his agenda and be, when are we seeing each other next? And then we compare agenda, find a date. Mm -hmm. And then even if it's in two weeks or whatever, the whole time leading up to that, there was no stress in our communication and texting back and forth and stuff like that and trying to figure out when, when, how to awkwardly bring up, oh, so should we do something? Should we do that or whatever? Mm -hmm. For me, it relieved a lot of that pressure. And I really appreciated the, at the end of seeing each other, the very like, when are we seeing each other next? Mm -hmm. It was like very clear. I had a good time with you. I want to do this again. Let's figure it out now. But wouldn't you agree that it's too much pressure on the other person? How do you mean? So like if like say like, yeah, you liked him and that's why that was a green flag for you. But if you didn't like him, I'd be oh, like it's... so awkward. Be like, uh, or then Forced you just make plans and then the you bail on them later, I guess. Okay, I agree that if it's awkward in the sense that you're f forcing the person to either lie to you and reject you in this on the spot. Yeah. But, you know, you could do it like, hey, um, we don't have to figure out the details now, but do you want to look at a, a, at a time frame that would work for both of us to... I don't know. I feel... Uh, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. I feel like I would just like... If I'm not into the person, I would find a date and then cancel afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, but um, but I so also like I feel like you kind of know if you know it's going well and stuff like that, right? Yeah, I agree, but I feel like some people just don't get the social cues, you know? Yeah, that's very fair. That's very 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 fair. Yeah. All right. So now, how do you end the, that wonderful date? Do you kiss on the first date? I think it's the vibe. I think it's a vibe if that person has a door open. You know, like I think some people have very strict rules of what they want to do, they what they don't want to do. I think like if you're feeling it, there's an opportunity to do it. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. But if you're kiss not feeling sure. it and you're like you want to leave things for the second day, that's totally fine too, you know? Just because you did get a kiss and there like maybe there wasn't an opportunity to really do it. Maybe the bar setting was a little different. Um you know, their Listen, Uber came faster I, than you expected and now you can't like you don't want to force a kiss, you know, and stuff like that. I will say you don't necessarily have to find the opportunity to kiss on the first day. Mm -hmm. But I will say if you did feel like kissing them on the first date, I probably wouldn't go on a second date. You didn't feel like kissing them. Yeah. 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 How about sex? Same thing. I think if it's the vibes right, go for it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think I agree. I think it really depends, right? If you're both into it, why not? Why, why stop yourself? Yeah. Right. I there was a time where I, I consciously tried not to have sex on first dates. Mm -hmm. Uh, it didn't make a big difference at all. Yeah. To the dates that I had, that did it made it made no difference other than sometimes I had sex. <laughs> <laughs> so i would say yeah i would agree with you it doesn't really matter it's not all that serious exactly yeah and then that being said what about like them staying the night then nope no that's too much that's too much interesting i mean also because of how i am like my social battery 
is uh, short. Yeah. And dating someone, meeting someone for the first time is stressful. Uh, it takes a lot of energy out of me. Mm-hmm. I need you to leave at some point so I can process and recover. Mm-hmm. No, you can't stay over. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> to me, I think like I would, I wouldn't mind that. Okay. But then it's like then, honestly, like to me, it's about the vibe. Uh, yeah. But okay, let me put it this way: because you're not going on date much, and you haven't dated since you were a teenager. Exactly. Say you're. You, you're a colleague from work. You're making that 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 leap from trying to be friends for the first time. You invite them over to have drinks at your place for the very first time. Are you open to them sleeping over? Like I wouldn't be like, "Hey, come sleep over after the drinks." But if it happens, it happens. No, I would hold that. Out. <laughs> no, and I get it. I, I I get where you're coming from too. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I like sleepovers. I love like a little cuddle and stuff like that. So. Yeah. You cuddle a lot with your uh, coworkers. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I think, right. but, but I think like coworkers is actually more of an acceptable scenario than a stranger. Yeah. I. Okay, here's another reason why I would not sleep over. I think too much of cuddling and spending the night together and that really romantic, sweet, intimate moment could make it difficult to have a... uh, You've done everything. This is a relationship. Why go on a second date now kind of thing? No, no. It's the opposite. It could be difficult to have an objective uh, opinion about the date and to really reflect and process how it really went and how you really felt about it afterwards. Mm Mm-hmm. Because you just had a really intense, intimate moment with them that didn't end and that you slept next to them. It's like, it would make it harder for me to to reflect like, hey, did I actually enjoy this person on the date? Or was it just nice to have a warm body and bed next to me? Yeah, true. I can see that. Give, yourself that, give yourself that space to, to, to process and, yeah. to, and to make that judgment kind of thing. Yeah, what do I know, right? I haven't dated it so long. <laughs> Please don't listen to my advice. <laughs> hey don't listen to any of this advice again the takeaway is don't take this too seriously yeah do whatever you want just have fun yeah and be safe but if you're gonna you know listen to one advice don't sleep over <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny um and then to f- finally the date went well how do you follow up afterwards how long do you wait to text back I, I love doing, like, I think I do this with my friends, and I think it's so thoughtful, but it's like, hey, text me when you get home. Oh, yeah. That's a really good way to do it. Wait, that's genius. I know. I'm pretty good at dating. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's just so thoughtful, and Thanks. it's a good way to end the night. Um, yeah. And then you also know that they're home safe, you're home safe, yeah. um, and then... Then that way it's like, okay, great. Like, glad that you're home. Have a good night. And then it's yeah. like, leaves the door open for a next good morning text or something like that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. Um, otherwise, I would probably wait till the next morning to say like, hey, I had a great time again or whatever. Mm-hmm. But but no longer. Yeah. I feel like, you know, like 2000s rom-coms always say like three days. And it's so dumb. And I'm like, what? But I think yeah. that's also like back then, like it was like phone calls, you know, with cord phones and leaving voicemails and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Now in yeah. texting culture that we're always glued to our phone. Yeah. I think 24 hours personal. Yeah. 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 At most. But I also don't think like if you're into someone, don't play too many games. Don't hold back. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That being said, if you're not into someone, also don't play too many games and just be like, hey, that was great. But like. I didn't feel the connection. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're better off as friends. You know what? It's always such a difficult text to write for me. Mm -hmm. But in the end, it's only been received well. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to reject someone either to say like, be respectful, obviously. Like, hey, had a great time. Think you're an interesting person. But I, I. I didn't feel that connection. Um, wish you best of luck. 
Yeah, I think exactly. You can't get upset. And if this person is getting upset, then that's a huge red flag. Yeah. And then second yeah. of all, like, it's good karma too, right? If that ever happens mm -hmm. with you, you'd want someone to let you know that play games with you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, and then usually I try to... So I... <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit free. I make mental notes during the date of like, oh, I'll look into that later. Um, or that would be something interesting to follow up in on. Mm -hmm. Or um, I don't know much about that. I'll, I'll, I'll read about that or whatever. And then I use that to text them back afterwards. Say like, oh, remember that movie you talked about? I just watched it. I actually enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, that's actually really cute. I like that right mm -hmm. or um or i just came across an article on a cryptocurrency turns out i don't want to date you anymore <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know like make it make a little mental note of something that you know a, a, a little hook your little in for next time something you know when they see they're like really passionate about something yeah mm -hmm. so you can deep dive on it and then talk to them or even like send a meme related to that or whatever mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So you're welcome, everyone. We just fixed dating for you. Yeah. I hope you guys all feel more equipped to date if you're single. Yeah. Or you judge dating like we yeah. did if you're not. And at first I was like, you know what? This is going to come out too late for Valentine's Day. But then again, you know, by day day, don't, don't put that pressure of getting the perfect Valentine's on yourself for Valentine's exactly. Day. Exactly. Just buy yourself a nice box of chocolate and, and have a good movie at home and then pick up your dating life some other day when it feels less... Um, Pressure. I was going to say desperate, but that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Is he less pressure? Totally. Yeah. <laughs> All single people listening to this are now like, fuck this podcast. Right. <laughs> well, on that note, um, I hope you enjoyed everyone and um, have a, uh, a wonderful rest of uh, the week and we'll talk to you next week. Thank you for weird. listening. <laughs> You're weird. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Tell Me Like I'm Stupid is created and produced by us, Sonia and Toma. You can follow us on Instagram at Tell Me Like I'm Stupid. If you'd like to support us, please subscribe and review on your favorite podcast streaming platform. Our cover art was created by Ish. Find him on Instagram at h.e.e.s.h. Thank you for listening.